Hi there, and welcome to the introductory lecture of how to launch your startup without writing any code. I initially created this course because I just found myself talking to uh, so many entrepreneurs, helping so many entrepreneurs who seem to have one big block in common. They all had a very clear idea, they had a very clear insight into an industry or an opportunity, but uh, they just felt like there was nothing they could do without some kind of massive skyscraper of a product before um, they did anything else. And for those that had no technical experience or you know had not come from a technical background, uh, that felt like a huge block. Either they didn't know how to work with developers, or manage developers, or write their own code. And you know when they told me their ideas, told me kind of what they were trying to accomplish, the thing that struck me was how much that could be achieved with off-the-shelf components, with um, things that exist, and a little bit of ingenuity, but nothing um, that would get in the way of launching to customers. And I realized that you know a lot of people have this misconception that um, a tech startup requires original, you know, handcrafted tech. The majority of cases, it doesn't. Um, in fact, some of the highly technical ideas the ones that are very custom and you would actually think that they require tech the most uh, actually sometimes have the biggest opportunities not to use technology. I want to tell you about how I've structured this course. So in the first section, we're going to talk about why being non-technical is an advantage. It's actually not just something you have to overcome, but it's actually a strength. We're going to talk about how to think about your startup in a way that you might not be used to. And I want to also, I'm going to give you some reasons um, to alleviate some mental blocks you might have. So in the second section, we're going to work on defining your idea to get it to a point where you've de described it specifically enough that it is very clear what you want to accomplish. The third section of this course is going to focus on what I think is the most powerful technology that you have available to you, and that's you. I want to show you just how you can use yourself as part of your system, as part of your technology, to get a lot of things going in a very scalable way and in a way that will make it very easy to then build a product because you will understand your product very, very well. Um, all the while, I want to show you how to make it appear on the outside like everything is automated. So that sounds kind of out there. So I'm going to also show you some very concrete examples of some highly technical companies, um, including uh, marketplaces, including um, uh, a business card uh, scanning application that was acquired by LinkedIn. I'm going to show you a very powerful algorithm uh, that was done behind the scenes that raised several million dollars. I'm going to show you an uh, online payments company that originally started with um, people and the co-founders actually doing it behind the scenes to grow. The fourth section of this course is then going to give you even more tactics. I'm going to talk about how the web is actually full of what I call Lego pieces. Uh, services that are very good at one thing, that are very easy to integrate, are meant for people without uh, technical backgrounds, uh, and are very cheap or often free uh, to use. I'm going to show you how you can connect these Lego pieces together with glue services, I call them. I'm also going to uh, devote a special part of that section to billing services and how what people think actually is the most complex you know, part of, of building a technology service or product can actually be the simplest. And I'm going to show you some techniques that I use to have a very secure, very professional um, payment integration also without any code. There's also a bonus section that I'm going to show you for um, highly, highly technical or highly custom ideas that uh, using a special trick that I discovered for getting them uh, implemented for very, very little money uh, without requiring any knowledge of code. In the fifth section of this course, we're going to talk about ideas that are platforms. So if your idea involves creating a platforms for uh, two different kinds of parties, two different kinds of users to interact with each other, I want to show you um, a lot of the major categories that, that these platforms fall into and how almost all of them can be achieved using the WordPress platform and WordPress plugins. And I'm going to walk you through some of these, show you some very concrete examples of very successful, very scalable sites that uh, are, have a lot of usage, a lot of engagement, and are making a lot of money. A lot of what I also am going to communicate in that section is that 
your learning doesn't stop with this course, that mainly what I want to impart upon you is that things are out there and I want to give you the mindset, I want to you know, teach you to fish so to speak, give you the mindset that allows you to go out there and know what to search for, to even know that you know, it's probably likely that what, you're, what you need exists and to start thinking in the mindset of you can get a lot done uh, without writing any code, how to kind of be very, very resourceful. In section six of this course, we're going to take a slightly different path. We're going to talk a little bit about interactive prototypes. Now, interactive prototypes uh, aren't necessarily going to help you solve your customer's need, but they serve a lot of very important purposes. They allow you to create working demos. They allow you to have um, you know, the interactions that you have in mind uh, communicated very clearly. They allow you to communicate to investors, partners, uh, future customers what it is you want to build and get feedback very, very quickly without investing a lot of time. So uh, I'm going to cover a lot of tools that you can use to make these interactive prototypes ranging from your desktop to actually running on your phone. And that's it. At the end of this course, we're going to circle back in. We're going to take what you did at the beginning of this course, which is define your idea very clearly. And we're going to take all the tools that you learned throughout the course and now that you know, you know what to look for, and we're going to you know, think about how you can take these tactics, very specific tactics and tools, and plug them into your customer's needs and the different cases in which you can help your customer. And by the end of this course, my goal is for you to have a actual working product or service that you can go off and start providing value to customers and users of your idea.